Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's edition of the Coffee Microcaps Morning Meeting. My name is uh, Mark Tobin. For anybody who hasn't joined us before, I'm the founder of Coffee Microcaps. I've got a couple of quick intro slides. We're going to just blaze through these and then we're going to get straight into it with our first presenter. I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor, uh, DMX Asset Management. For anybody who's kind of followed the ASX microcap space, I'm sure they'll be uh, familiar to you all. If you haven't, uh, they run a microcap and a small cap fund now, which launched the uh, back end of last year. So be going, be sure to uh, check out their website for the PDS. Uh, quick compliance and disclaimer slide. And the companies that we generally have uh, presenting on here this morning too are no different. Capped under 300 million Australian in revenue uh, and approaching cash flow break even, or in the case of our two companies this morning, already profitable. Uh, we generally don't have stuff from the resources or biotech sectors, uh, what I like to call industrial microcaps, which are catch all for microcap technology, financial services, uh, healthcare, uh, basically anything outside resources and biotech. Uh, structured this morning's webinar, two companies, as I said, a 30-minute slot for each, which we'll break down into a 20-minute prezzo, 10 minutes of Q&A. If you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box rather than the chat function. This makes it easier for me to moderate to our presenters. And please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel tomorrow morning. Uh, you can follow us on all the socials, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, LinkedIn, and I also write a weekly paid subscription newsletter, uh, which you can grab on the Substack platform. Uh, first up, we've got Sam Allard, CEO of Reckon. After that, we've actually got another Sam, Sam Riley, who will be familiar to some of our uh, regular uh, attendees from Ansarada, who's joining us, I think, now for the third time. So without further ado, I am going to stop sharing my screen and hand over to Sam from Reckon. Sam, if you want to start sharing your screen. Uh, yep, Thanks. I can see the cover slide now, Sam, you're good to go. Excellent. Thanks very much, Mark. And uh, thanks very much for the invitation to be on this morning. I should start by saying happy St. Pat's Day, Mark. Um, as well good to day. everyone else, Every, uh, as well to everyone else who's who's joined us this morning. Um, so yeah, 30 minutes to introduce you to Reckon. Some of you may have heard about us before. We, we have been listed on the, the ASX for well over 20 years. Uh, we've distributed brands like QuickBooks, our own product Reckon, uh, APS and NQ Billback. So we've, we've certainly distributed a lot of products. Uh, really looking forward to taking you through the Reckon story this morning and then a bit of time at the end for some questions. And the main thing I want to share with you is that as CEO of this company, uh, I really feel that we've got to be one of the best value tech stocks on the ASX today. Um, so if you can get that message throughout my presentation, then I feel like I've, I've succeeded. I'm going to start with a couple of intro slides, just a bit of an overview and then a bit of a corporate summary. Um, but for those who haven't ever come across us, so we are a software business. We develop, sell, support, upgrade and maintain our technology ourselves. So we're very much a tech company. Our whole focus has been building not only the best products, but building them on the latest tech. We've built a very, very profitable, solid business on typically desktop on-premise software. And we've had a huge focus over the last five to seven years of taking those clients and those products into the cloud. We operate in three businesses or three segments that I, I will talk about, being small businesses, accountants, and legal firms. We've got very strong uh, earnings profile, and particularly today, I mean, as investors, you'll understand that right now it is quite a volatile market. And I think hopefully by the end of the presentation that you'll see, we've been extremely consistent in very, very profitable and stable earnings, as well as being a dividend paying tech stock, which has been quite unusual. Uh, as I say, we've got a huge focus on our cloud products and, and ongoing continuing investment there. In two of our divisions, we're lucky to work with some of the biggest accounting firms and legal firms in the business. Uh, and 
now that we've got more cloud products in the market than ever before, we've got a huge focus on growth. A bit of a boring slide, but an important one. Our corporate overview. Uh, again, for those who haven't followed us before, the ASX code is RKN for Reckon. We've got 113 million shares on issue, which at the time of publishing this investor update in Feb, we were, uh, we were bang on a dollar share price. So it was quite easy to work out the market cap at 113 million. Uh, yesterday, I think we closed at around 91 cents. Our 52 week high, 74 cents to $1.19. We do carry a tiny bit of debt. We've got about 15 million of debt, which I'll talk about later. Uh, we've actually reduced that very aggressively over the last three years. We were sitting at about 45 million of debt and we've reduced that right down now to 15 million. We've got our board of directors on the right. They, they love sharing their photos uh, on there. What you will notice is it's a, a very talented board, but a board that very much knows tech companies and um, very excited about turning our business from not only a safe, profitable uh, uh, income generating business, but into a really exciting cloud-based tech company. Some of our major shareholders, um, I'll start at the top, Novati Group, uh, they are another ASX listed tech company. They specialize in payments. So helping businesses uh, get paid and receive their money far quicker. Novati invested, um, as you can see in Reckon in June last year, and very much their whole public, publicly stated strategy was that they're an expert in payments. We're an expert in cloud software for small businesses and accountants. And if we bring those solutions together, uh, we're going to help small businesses and accounting and legal firms get paid faster and ultimately increase the share of wallet for both Novati and Reckon. We've since been engaged in great commercial conversations and, and I'll touch on that a bit later, but we are looking forward to releasing our first integrated product um, very soon, actually, this year. We've long been uh, had some great supporting fund managers, so Sferia Asset Management, Micro Equities Asset Management, uh, not on the list, but we've had a long uh, relationship with Wilson Asset Management as well. And as you'll see there with the Rabi family and Greg Wilkinson, uh, two of our board members, the founder and CEO before me in terms of Clive, uh, lots of shareholding on, on the board. So now I want to get into the exciting stuff. Who we provide software for how we provide that software. And again, why I think that we represent amazing value uh, on, on the market today. So the three client bases or, or business areas that we break it down for. So for small businesses, we provide accounting and payroll software, predominantly in Australia and New Zealand. And we've got the product localized in the UK, but we haven't really pushed it out in the UK, but we've got a tiny presence there. In the middle is our accountants range. So we provide practice management and compliance software for accounting firms. And we work with accounting firms of all sizes from some of the big four, right down to small practices. Again, predominantly Australia and New Zealand. And we've got a distribution arrangement with a, a, a business over in the UK. And then the smallest part of our business, but arguably the, the biggest green shoot possibility of our business is our legal group, where we provide cost recovery, workflow, and developing a practice management solution for legal firms. That business is run out of the US with a big presence in the US and the UK. Another way of looking at that same information, but breaking it down a little bit more. So we've got the, the product logos down the bottom. So whilst the company across all of this is called Reckon, we've got some very strong logo brands in each area. Our focus, as I say, has been, though all of our businesses have been income generating, uh, nice, solid, recurring revenue businesses, but our whole focus has been to take those existing clients to the cloud, as well as as we develop new cloud products, actually widen the addressable market in each of our businesses. The business group, so again, accounting and payroll solutions for SMEs. We've now got a cloud user base of over 114,000 users. We've got a partner network of 6,000 partners being bookkeepers and accountants and other advisors who recommend our products. 
We're seeing some really strong uptake, uptake in our cloud products and, and mobile products. And pleasingly, most of this division's revenue is now in the cloud. In the accountants group, as I mentioned, we work with firms of all size. So our leading brand there being the APS brand is really enterprise grade software for medium to large accounting firms. We're very proud to work with three of the big four and eight of the top 10 accounting firms in Australia and New Zealand. So that's PwC, Deloitte, KPMG, Findex, Grant Thornton, BDO, Picture Partners, all using the APS solution, uh, if not entirely in their business, in at least one division of their business. The whole focus of the, the accountants group, again, is not only supporting our existing clients, but taking them on a journey to the cloud. And, and pleasingly, in 2021, we released a, uh, our APS workspaces, which is an entire APS suite in the cloud today. And then the legal firm. As I say, it is the smallest part of our business, representing about 12% of our, of our revenue uh, as a group. But in terms of the US and UK market opportunity and the quality of the team, we do see it as a huge growth area for us in the future. And again, to remind you, we, the core business provides cost recovery, scanning and print solutions. So integrating for a legal firm's multifunction device where it's, it counts the scans and the prints and then charges the clients for, for the privilege of working with that legal firm. Um, we've really automated some workflow around that process and are now building out the practice management solution for legal firms. The important, the important metrics. So the top half of this slide is our ongoing, uh, our financial operation or financial metrics. And the bottom is how we use that money. Um, so we've done 71 million, we're, we're a calendar year end, I should say as well. So these are our full year results to 31st December, 2021. Uh, so we've just started our new financial year. 71 million of revenue across the group. Pleasingly, most of our revenue is subscription-based or annual recurring. You'll see we've had a bigger focus on moving our revenue to annual recurring than just growing the top line. Where that could impact us is where we're doing services or upfront jobs where we used to get quite a bit of upfront money, but rather we're taking it in monthly or annual subscription to continue growing our annual recurring revenue. As I've touched on a couple of times, we are very profitable and cash flow generating. So out of that 65 million, we do 29 million of EBITDA. Uh, and then we generate 8 million of cash flow at the end of it all. How do we use our money? Well, as I said, we're continually taking all of our products to the cloud. So we've got a huge investment in development and providing not only new features and functionality, but changing the platform of, of those products. So we're investing $20 million per annum of development. We continue to bring down our debt. We reduce our debt from our own free cash flow, but also last year we did sell uh, one of our businesses, a business called Reckon Docs. We sold that to uh, a partner of ours called Class Super. Um, so that helped us reduce the debt even more last year. And as a tech company, which is quite unusual for a tech company, we've always been dividend paying. So we, in the full year, we paid a five cent fully frank dividend. Um, representing a great return. As I said, at the time of publishing this report, our share price was trading at around a dollar. So uh, at a fully frank dividend, that's a 5% return, but, but considering it's fully frank, some of our shareholders are getting more like eight, 9% return on their money at a dollar, let alone at 91 cents that we finished at yesterday. I just wanna talk a little bit about some of our, our 2021 highlights. Our big focus is on cloud technology and transitioning the core business and that revenue and profitable generating core business into the cloud. It's very pleasing that we're so well advanced across all of our businesses. Our record of being a very safe, profitable, cash generating and dividend paying company continues. Um, if you go and do the research, over many, many years, we've continued to pay dividends and, and generate free cash flow. We're seeing stable growth and profitability growth through both our business group and the accountants group. 
and we see significant potential for our legal group and they really brought it home strong in the second half. So if you delve deeper into our financials and compare the first six months of last year to the second six months of last year, you'll see we're getting nice momentum in our legal group. I touched on Novati Group who came in as a shareholder uh, last year, but again, we have started partnership discussions with them and product integration discussions very well progressed and we're really looking forward to rolling out their payment solution to our small business clients throughout this year um, but it will actually be very soon this year and really providing small businesses a far better way to receive money and improve their cash flow than they have before and and at the same time increasing our share of wallet across our existing clients i've touched on these Points, but our net debt, again, reduced from 30 million to 14 million in the financial year last year. Our annual recurring revenue continues to grow year on year, up 3% in the year, and a fully franked five cent dividend for the year. I'll try not to bore you with too much detail on this particular slide, but, but you'll see here that we continue to invest more and more into development across all of our groups. Pleasingly though, that additional investment must be bringing more cloud products into the market. And again, those cloud products not only work for and complement our existing clients, but they provide a bigger addressable market for us. I'll just touch on a couple of highlights from last year. We've got a huge focus on payroll and we have for a couple of years. We completely rewrote our payroll products in the cloud last year and released a new paid uh, payroll mobile app with an accompanying um, employee app called Reckon Mate. So all of the 300,000 plus employees that are paid via Reckon can start to interact with a, an app called Reckon Mate where they can not only see their uh, payment information, their leave balance, et cetera, but we can start to provide them more services in those apps. Reckon Insights is a business intelligence reporting tool that allows not only advisors like bookkeepers and accountants, but business owners to run far more detailed reports across all of their business units. For the APS range, we've um, taken the whole APS suite, not only our cloud modules, but even the on-premise fully featured APS suite, and we've hosted that in Azure in a cloud environment. So what that means is that an APS firm can take their entire practice to the cloud today. That was a huge release. And when I touch on APS further in a minute, you'll see our new business sales in the second half really picked up and it was based on releasing that cloud product. And finally, to our NQ ZebraWorks business, we released the first modules of our new cloud practice management system. The method behind our madness there is that those modules related to data management, collection and payments, um, and they integrate to competitors' desktop practice management products. So we, we know that those products are sellable and sellable today. Development doesn't all happen in one year. So I'm very pleased to say that that investment in development has got some new cloud products lined up for us to release in this first quarter. In fact, Inquiry Q, we've already released in the US, which is the next module of our cloud practice management, and imminently releasing a new. Reckon invoicing app that complements our Reckon One cloud small business product, um, but can run as a standalone app, as well as APS Ledger Plus, which is the accountant's view of, of the ledger. The next three slides just talk about each business unit in a little bit more detail, trying to highlight the strategy and, and, and some of the exciting momentum we've got there. So again, this is our business group. It's our small business accounting and, and payroll products. We've had these products in the cloud the longest. And what you can see here is our ability to sell and grow our business with cloud products. So we've now got over 114,000 cloud users in this group. That's 12% annualized user growth and 8% annualized cloud revenue growth. Pleasingly, 58% of the revenue in this group is, is now in, in the cloud. We've got a huge focus on payroll as I touched on, and there's over 300,000 uh, employees being paid throughout Australia using Reckon, Reckon software. 
In the accountants group, uh, the, the key thing I really want to highlight here is that across our whole range, we've got 84,000 seats, 84,000 users across all of our modules. For those with a sharp eye, we'll notice a small dip last year. Uh, it's worth addressing that. One of our big four firms turned off one of our smaller modules that had very high usage because it was per ledger or per file. Um, it didn't impact our revenue uh, materially, but it did, it did impact our seat count. The only way we're going to offset that is new business. And what you'll see here is that in the full year, we signed 22 new logos onto the APS product. 15 of those signatures were in the last four months of the calendar year last year. And it's because we released the APS Workspaces full cloud suite for that market. The other cloud modules complement Workspaces and actually provide us products and modules that we can sell to clients that don't wanna go completely to the cloud, but they also give a far better user experience. So what we've done is we've hit this year with a backlog of orders in APS that we can implement and generate revenue and with a product that we can really sell. And again, to the US business being legal practice management software. Uh, a very quick background on this is that last year, early parts of last year, so Feb last year, we finalized the acquisition of a business over there called ZebraWorks. The ZebraWorks team Actually, their history is that they wrote a product, a practice management product for legal firms. They sold it to about two and a half thousand legal practices in the US. And then they sold that business to Thomson Reuters and Thomson Reuters own and operate that product now. They were out of the market for, for the few years and then their clients called them and said, please, can you take us to the cloud? So the ZebraWorks team actually came back in and started developing a new cloud practice management system for legal firms. We acquired their business and merged it into our US business. They now run the business. They actually own 30% of our US business, the management over there, very well driven to succeed in, in that particular group. And we're excited by it, not only because of the caliber of the management team there, but because of the size of the US market with 46,000 firms, as well as the UK and, and Europe, Europe market. And finally, we can't do anything without the quality of our team. Um, I will use my own story as a bit of a highlight here. I've been with the group for over 22 years. Uh, you can't see my camera because otherwise you'd think, wow, he must've started when he was 12. Uh, but the reality is we've got so many people who have grown up or been with us more than five or 10 years. Why is that important? It's important because we've got domain knowledge that I truly know is second to none. There is no competitor that has the same domain knowledge across small businesses, accounting practices and legal firms that we've got. We use that to continue to, to, bet, to develop the best products and the best features, but also to support our clients. These are some of our most recent employee stats against benchmark stats. Overall, uh, we're, we're really shining in terms of our employees engagement and connection to our strategy. And finally, because I do want to open up to questions. A big thanks. Thanks to Mark. Thanks to everyone for listening. There's some valuable resources there, including my own personal email. Um, very happy to be contacted direct. Uh, I'm not one of the standoffish CEOs, but also if you just go to reckon.com, you can find everything else about us uh, and there's particular investor areas there. Mark, I'll hand back to you for questions. Uh, thanks, Sam. Yeah, we've got a few in from the audience already. Um, uh, you touched on the Navahi one, so I'm just going to, the timing of the product launch, but maybe if you can give us a sense of how the commercial model is going to work between you. Is it a case of, you know, a very simple, you know, it's their payment product pushed out to your um, small business group and it's just a simple revenue share or uh, how is it go going to work? Yeah, good question. Yeah, in, in short answer, very much as you just described, uh, a very simple commercial model where it's a revenue share of that, that transaction fee. But I'll provide more detail. Um, being in small business accounting and payroll for so long, we already partner with payments companies. So our clients can already set up payments with PayPal, 
BPAY and, and the big four banks if they want to. The difference there is we don't do any revenue share. The other difference is that Novati is an expert in payments. So they don't offer just one solution. They allow businesses to get paid not only via credit card, direct debit, BPAY. Uh, they're also working on crypto payments. They've got a, um, uh, oh, I've just lost the word, but like a barcode solution, which is not the actual word I'm after, but essentially something that pops up on your mobile that you can scan and, and it directs you to the payments page. So we believe their services are far better. And yes, we'll integrate that and offer it to our 114,000 cloud users uh, for the clients that take it on. And we, we will just share a clip of that transaction revenue. Okay, great. Uh, the next one, um, yeah, I guess maybe a bit of a tough environment for it recently, but quantum of price increases that you can put through across the various product segments, if you want to maybe take, uh, um, you know, the three of them in turn, maybe. Yeah, th thanks for saying that, because I do need to take the three of them in turn. Uh, and I'm really glad this question got asked because it allows me to touch on something. One of our differentiators, so in our small business accounting and payroll, we compete with Zero, MYOB, and now with Intuit coming to Australia, Intuit QuickBooks. So we compete against some very big players. Product to product, we all do the same thing. And you can go and do the comparison yourself. And in fact, we think we're far better in certain areas and our competitors will think they're far better in certain areas. One thing we're very different on though, is we provide choice, flexibility and unlimited usage. And what that means is clients can turn on one module, uh, two modules or three modules, and they only pay for what they use. The other thing we do is when you turn on a module, e.g. payroll, if you pay one employee today, three employees next month and 10 employees a month after, you don't pay us anymore. Most of our competitors, in fact, all of our competitors get you in at discounted prices at one employee and then very quickly go to 50, 70, $120 a month. We are the most affordable cloud accounting software in the market, bar none. Often we are less than 50% of our competitors' standard pricing and sometimes even more. In fact, we've got a pricing comparison on our website. So a very long-winded way of saying in our small business product, we are going for market share and we are creating a very affordable product for the market. That said, the return to us is that over a longer period of time, we've got great upside in price increases. In our APS business, We've long worked with the biggest accounting firms. We've done very, very small marginal increases over the last five years, very much CPI or even less. You're talking one and a half to two and a half percent over the last number of years. The reason for that is even though we've been investing more, we want our clients to stay with us as we take them on the journey to the cloud. As we release more cloud products, there is opportunity to get back to more normalized 5%, et cetera, price increases. And with the legal business, we really need to get those products in market. Yes, we've got core products already in, in, in the market generating circa $10 million US uh, per annum. We, again, are doing marginal price increases on those products with a view on cloud practice management being the big revenue kicker in, in, in the future. And next one, uh, I think, is worth uh, maybe touching on. And are you expecting development expense to keep rising? I know it was in that little bar chart. Uh, it's gone yeah. up over the last four years. Or have we peaked? Is it kind of going to stabilize at that kind of 20 million per annum now? Um, what's the outlook yeah. in terms of, because uh, it sounds like a lot has been spent to kind of get to today's point. Yeah, a lot has been spent to get to today's point, and we're not through it. Um, in terms of the peak, we, we might spend a little bit more this year, circa 21, 22 million. The other thing we've got to acknowledge is it is a very competitive environment for development resources worldwide. So our US team, our New Zealand team, our Australian team, our UK team, we actually can't fill the amount of development roles we've got. So we actually budgeted to spend more than 20 million last year. We couldn't spend it because we couldn't find the people. Um, that's an ongoing business challenge. So I just link that back to say, yes, we will continue investing at that level or slightly higher. Over the next, I would say, one to three years, 
because we've really got to finish the cloud suite and enhance it for the practice management accountants business, as well as finish the cloud suite for our practice management legal business. Okay, great. Sam, uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, we didn't manage to get to Autumn. So I would say if you can reach out to Sam uh, directly, uh, his email address is there. He's circling it with his cursor now. Thank you very much. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we can uh, maybe catch up on all things reckon uh, a few months uh, down the line. I would love that, Mark. Thanks again for inviting me on today. Cheers. And Sam, if you could please yeah, stop sharing your screen, because I know we have the other Sam waiting patiently uh, in the wings, Sam Riley, uh, CEO of Ansarada, who is actually coming back to uh, give us an update on all things Ansarada. Uh, Sam, if you want to start sharing your screen, I'll let you know when I can... Um, see it coming through yeah and if you just want to go to slide share mode there yeah perfect Dick. you're good to go sam okay well everyone can hear me okay just checking yeah audio is good great all right well thanks for having me back mark and um everyone on the call virtually a big big hello yeah good bit Exciting update for you, really, what's been going on at Ansarada, and I'll cover off a bit of basics for anyone who don't, doesn't know who we are. So uh, we, we've had a fantastic um, run throughout the last, well, our whole life, really, but especially the last year. So what I'm going to take you through today is, um, you know, another period of profitability for us. Since we listed in December, every single reporting period, we've increased our growth, we've increased our revenue. We've done it profitably and we've used those funds to reinvest back into the business, self-funded some acquisitions, and we find ourselves in a strong position. So the second thing I'm going to do is show you a bit of our strategy and products and understand how we serve people. And, and uh, the third thing is the markets that we operate in, you know, demonstrate to you the enormous size of them, our track record in them, the strengths we have and why we're positioned to continue growing because uh, we're very early in the adoption life cycle for what we're offering uh, the world. So, you know, Ansarada is a platform that <laughs> the pros in business uh, use and they trust and rely on us every day. You know, there's over half a million people around the world that use Ansarada uh, to prepare and run high risk processes that involve uh, the workflow around information, securing it, tracking it, uh, being able to report on it, uh, baking in efficiency. You know, governments use our platform. So we're the centerpiece platform that's used for the flow of information for high risk, high value tenders. So Sydney light rail, a new airport, a new hospital. You know, so we, we do those projects around the world like in the Middle East, Eddie had rails, massive rail project. That tender runs on our platform. Uh, we've got tenders in the US, and as you know, they're, they're spending trillions on infrastructure renewal in the US. Um, you know, deals like M&A, capital raising, insolvency, corporate recovery, like the Virgin restructure deal that was done on Ansarada, uh, Woodside and BHP, they're doing a merger now all of the information flow and security exchange uh, collaboration for that deal is done on Ansarada. Real estate firms like Mervac, Stockland, uh, you know, hundreds of others, uh, they, they use Ansarada all the time. They have multi-year subscriptions because they're doing valuations of buildings, revaluations, they're buying assets, they're selling assets, they're refinancing. And they're constantly using Ansarada. Um, energy companies use Ansarada. So we're used by every industry. So what, what's interesting is everyone knows renewables are really hot at the moment. So all the financing around renewable projects, the infrastructure around renewables, the investment in there, the due diligence there that's required from an environmental level and everything else, that, that runs on Ansarada. So, you know, We've got four products, as you can see, deals, a 
a board product to, you know, when you're running a board and committees, it's made for the governance layer there, makes it really simple and easy, highly secure. I talked about tenders and we've got, we acquired at the end of October, a, a, a really powerful governance risk and compliance system that helps companies manage that day to day. So that's who we are. We're trusted by the pros, very large brand we have internationally and we're bringing new products to market to continue growing. Just want to take you through a few highlights that, that we've had over the, the, up to the half year. So we grew our revenue 52%, which is a great result. Uh, deferred revenue, which you might be familiar with in software as a service companies, when, when we sell, say, say we sell someone a uh, 12 month subscription, uh, that the payment for that, some, it gets, de gets deferred over the 12 months. Let's say it's a $100,000 subscription, 120,000 just for ease, ease. 10,000 dollars would be recognized revenue every month, which means you know, we're building up a lot of future booked revenue, which makes it uh, our revenue growth really a lot safer and stable. ARPA is our average revenue per account. So sort of think of this per customer, what are we charged them? So we're, we're generating now $1,280 per month. That's per month. And that's up 29%. Uh, our gross margin uh, has always been high around 92%. But what we've done is create a real simple digital sign-up and onboarding experience where people can go online, even though our product is highly sophisticated. Uh, it, we've made it like two or three clicks to get going, get value. And what that's meant is our, now our sales commissions, we've got a direct sales team. But because our e-commerce platform is growing exponentially, uh, you know, the commissions are less for us on our total revenue. So 95% gross margin, which is probably the highest you'll see anywhere. Uh, like I said, we did it profitably. So our adjusted EBITDA, 4.2 million, 89% up. And we generated free cash of 6.7 million. So that was a great result for us. and. Uh, one we're really proud of. We've worked really hard on that. Uh, you know, this slide will show you, regardless of economic conditions, Answerata always grows. You can see that in the customer graph on the right. We've accelerated the customer growth. Uh, I, I've operated Answerata from the get-go. <laughs> when, we, when we started with $30,000 in capital uh, between the four founders. Uh, you know, now, when we got to the GFC, that was a bit of a, a moment for us, but it was a massive opportunity because disruption in the economy uh, with distressed uh, assets sales, you've got refinancing of debt, uh, you've got people that have to do strategic reviews and engage with their advisors to make smart decisions. That, that, that kind of activity really benefits us. So we're, we're, we're a good stock to own in that environment. Uh, and now that we've established all of these revenue streams across the globe for different use cases, um, we're in a great position to continue, continue the growth. So what I want to do is just walk you through a little bit of our strategy, uh, just so you can see where we're going. Uh, so the first part is the markets we operate in. So deals like capital raising, IPO, financing, all the stuff I said, insolvency, anything that requires due diligence and preparation of information and risk of disclosure, all of that, you know, where the trusted product there, that's a $2.2 billion market. Uh, tendering, we, years ago, we tailored our product for the process that you run large tenders and infrastructure development off, very specific functionality that, you know, large corporates and governments love. That, the estimated spend on infrastructure globally per annum for the next 20 years is $3.9 trillion. So massive growing market. We've got a strong product. We've invested in growing our sales and marketing team in that space. And it's one of the fastest growing areas of our business. The last market is the governance, risk, compliance, and ESG market. So with the increased volume of 
compliance and risk activities coming down on every company. Uh, there's a lot of demand to have proper risk and compliance software. Now, more than 60, 70% of companies still manage their risk and compliance activities on spreadsheets and email. And besides being risky, it's just not scalable. It's not efficient. So uh, GRC software is becoming a standard part of any business. That's why we got into that business. And we already have strengths around risk and governance and security. So all of these things we're established in, we've worked really hard to build the products, build the brand. They're fast growing markets. And you know we're looking to capitalize on that. So our strategy, how are we going to capitalize on it? We've got thousands of customers. So what, what we've implemented in the whole company is every product is initially free for people to use, free to sign up, no risk, no fuss. You just go get going in a couple of clicks. Uh, and what we do is we charge people once they see the value of the product. So that could be uh, a volume of information they put in there, then they to paid, it could be they activate a feature and that feature is a, a paid feature. So depending on the product, there's different gates. But essentially, here's, here's a typical thing that you know, could happen. Uh, someone says, yeah, I want to use Ansarada to do my capital raise. So they sign up for free and they get going. They prepare using our workflow because we've done 30,000 deals. We give people like a, a template to follow and they do that. And then when they go live with that deal to a potential investor on the other side, they convert to paid. So they start paying for that deal's product. But one of the things that, there's lots of things that happen in due diligence because it's like an X-ray on a business. And one of the things businesses have to do is they go, they've got to go grab all their contracts, employment contracts, customers, you know, contracts, supplier contracts, all of the contracts in the business form part of due diligence. Now that exercise for businesses to go gather all that illuminates to them a lot of problems in the way they manage contracts. Because more than half of, you know, actually a lot more, more like 70, 80% of businesses don't have a contract management system. Now we do. So we say, look, were these contracts unsigned? Could you find them all? Were they out of date? Etc. It's like, oh yeah, it's a nightmare. We didn't realise till we had to go gather them. Well, why don't you use our contract management system for free? And of course, they can convert to pay. And then it goes on and on. So what we what what our strategy is that we're working on is to modularise all of our solutions so that there's a specific solution for a specific pain point. And because we get exposure to thousands of companies around the world at their most crucial intimate moment. That, that diagnosis of pain and risk they've had, we can prescribe a solution to them that they then adopt for free and convert to paid. So it could be ESG reporting, could be our board product, which is going really, 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 really well. So that, that's our strategy to continue growing rapidly. And this is very similar to what you see companies like Canva, Atlassian, Basically, any of the fast growth SaaS companies in the world make it easy to sign up, reduce the friction, give people a lot of value up front, trusting that the product will be so valuable people convert to paid and then, then start growing customers over time. So one, one, one area that's very fast growth in the world is ESG, which, which is simply a measure of uh, basically, you know, how much how much is the company a good corporate citizen? What, what is this company committed to and compliant with and measuring and reporting on in relation to the environment and their impact on it, social standards and governance? So here's an example, right? You could have shareholder rights, board governance, anti-corruption, you know, there's things like pollution, resource use, health and safety, modern slavery, all, all of these things, right? So, so ESG, because uh, of the circle of investing, you know, as you, you all know, a lot of people don't just want to get a return on their money. They want to see their money get a return and have a positive impact on the world. So that rolls up into, by 2025, 
$53 trillion of assets under management are projected to, to be ESG assets. So there's a massive demand from investors to, for companies to be able to demonstrate their ESG strengths and get, so they can rate them and they can invest in them with confidence. Now, like I said, 60% of businesses don't use a GRC system that underpins this. So there's a huge demand there. And the last thing I'd say is besides the ESG market growing rapidly, it's becoming multi-beneficial for a company to do ESG. Because it's not just, you know, if a company does ESG, well, yes, they get better investment dollars at better rates, but they also can attract staff, better, better employees, because purpose-driven employees want to work for companies that can demonstrate, hey, this is our commitment. This is what we're doing. We report on it every quarter. We're transparent about it. And we've got plans to improve the impact we're having. Um, also, customers will be attracted to businesses that do this and they spend more money there. So it's becoming an imperative for companies. And uh, ESG is still the wild, wild west in terms of software and systems and how do you do it? So we're already ahead of the curve and we've got a solution we're gonna to bring to market. I won't spend too much on this, but you know, if you do wanna report on ESG, like that previous slide, it's kind of the expression of the iceberg, but what's underneath it is all the compliance standards and policies in the company and how are the risks measured there? How do you track the metrics and reporting? Who has to do that in the business? When do they do it? How do they do it? <laughs> you can see you need a system that can automate a lot of that for you. Otherwise, companies simply can't do it because it's too inefficient, too costly. So the tri-line acquisition that we made in October was to give us the capability to really go hard and do this properly. So that's a bit on strategy. Numbers-wise, I'll zoom through this. So we had a tremendous period of growth. I covered off our top numbers. Customers grew 21%. Our subscribers, 35%. So the difference for us is when someone signs up for a uh, freemium or they become a customer and you know we serve them, but when they convert to paid, they're a subscriber. They're a paid subscriber. So you know, I would say you'll see our customer growth start to outstrip our subscriber growth because we're now seeing a lot of demand for freemium. But of course, that's a leading indicator of subscribers, which is a leading indicator of revenue. Like I said, revenue grew uh, first the first half, 52%. Uh, deferred revenue up. International revenue uh, outstripped our APAC revenue. So, you know, 58% growth. So we've roughly 44% of answer writers' revenues generated internationally. We're established in America, Europe, Asia, and that growth outstripped uh, ANZ. Gross margin I covered off, profitability way up, and cash flow from operations was way up. So we're able to self-fund our growth strategy. Uh, and last slide before Q and A, Mark, is just a bit of a summary of you know, who we are. We've got six hundred thousand of professionals in companies accounting firms, investment banks, lawyers that every day are trying to reduce risk, get things done faster, more efficient. We're, the, the markets we're operating in a massive 50 billion, 82% in sub subscription revenue, massive gross margin. We have zero debt and we've got just over 20 million in cash to fund growth and we're cash flow positive. So I'll just finish there for you. And uh, whilst we go into Q&A, if you do want to get in touch and you want any more information whatsoever, just email us at investors at answerrider.com. Uh, thanks, Sam. Uh, we've got one question here from the audience already. Um, it says your um, average revenue per account is quite low relative to the size some of the deals your customers are using the data room for. Do you think you can increase the price multiples without getting a pushback? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, well, the short answer is yes, because our win 
you know, the leading indicator of whether you can put your prices up is your, your win rates. Like when you get an opportunity, what's your conversion to winning that opportunity? So our win rates uh, at a minimum in regions where we're just growing 30%, but in regions where we're established, our win rate's 70%. So yes, there's a lot of scope where we could ubiquitously raise prices. But what I'd, what I'd say to that is, and I, we do do big, complicated, sophisticated projects, but we also are used by people that do small projects and they do small uh, use cases for Ansarada. Because we, we grow up with people. We want to be there when they do their Series A capital raise, when they get their first board. And we do a, we do a multitude of very, very small transactions. And we've made it easy for anyone to use us. So in the Ansarada subscriber base, you've got massive government contracts and, and uh, big business. But you've also got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small to medium businesses, mid-sized businesses doing using Ansarada uh, which is great for us because as they grow up, they expand. So it's a mixture in our upper. Uh, so, you know, our upper will continue going up. It's a good question. Another one from the audience, uh, Sam. Uh, what's in the development pipeline from an expense point of view? Do you expect uh, to spend more or less in the future? I guess maybe if we reframe it, uh, you know, development costs is it do you look at it as a percentage of revenue maybe or is it you know just yeah what's coming back in from customers like let's say like an esg and it's like okay we you know what can we do in terms of platform functionality and features yeah so we've got a pretty well established dev team we we, we five years ago we set up our own development operation in um, vietnam and vietnam's like just a wealth of development talent and you know, a lot of the problems facing companies recruiting tech tech talent. Fortunately, we're not having that issue. Um, we're also a great place to work. Uh, 10 years, we're in the top 50 great places to work for 10 consecutive years. So we've got a great value prop for uh, uh, employees. Uh, but w development wise, we do, we do spend quite a high percentage of revenue and we always have on R&D. Um, but we're not looking to raise that. So as our revenue grows, yes, we do spend more on development, but we're not increasing and we don't plan to increase the percentage of revenue on dev. Uh, where we are spending more money is on non-headcount marketing. So this is really uh, you know, advertising and digital branding to uh, attract people into our funnel. So, what we've been doing for the last year is we've been putting more money into marketing, but we're measuring the payback of that money and we're getting a four month payback. So our target internally is we will spend more and more money as long as the payback period is four months or less. So the, the, the largest increase in our spend will continue to come from marketing because it's driving a lot of profitable growth and, and, and that'll be the, the, the biggest spend. And then uh, one for me, um, you talked about, you know, the cross-sell strategy um, in one of the earlier slides, um, and that's, you know, a big part of the overall strategy going forward. Have you got an idea now of, you know, within the current customer base, you know, how many people are using multiple modules on average, you know, is it, you know, across the customers, like 2.5 modules or three modules? And have you got a kind of a target of, okay, if we look out three years from now, uh, ESG is well bedded in with the acquisition, you know, what, what, what that kind of can look like in terms of uh, a goal for upselling or cross-selling, whichever you want to call it. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it is a small percentage of the customer base that's using multiple modules because it's only in the last sort of three to four years that we've, you know, built the products and, or acquired the product, started integrating them. But what we're seeing is just massive, massive growth. It's the fastest growing thing in our business is, is the multi-module um, you know, adoption. So for, I'll tell you a story, like, you know, we, we've got a board product for board and committee management, but we wanted to make it one click for any Ansarada customer to use that. We put it on a freemium model. 
and we we made the the onboarding journey once you sign up to be really simple and automated so you can get to your first board meeting publish your first board pack with with without talking to anyone really easy so we worked hard on that for the last sort of nearly a year and then we launched it a few weeks ago and you know we when we when we did that we had over 150 customer signups to the board product and that that that's just fantastic that that actually outstripped our deal signups in that period so the board products probably the most mature in terms of that um that that ex how easy it is for customers to go on to multi modules so as we bring on more and more and more modules we're going to piggyback off the experience we established for the board product and we're going to grow the percentage of revenue like i'll tell you one of our ambitious crazy goals is one day we want to offer our deals product for free um because you know fifteen thousand per annum roughly that 1200 arpa figure i showed you every deal has 15 uh other organizations on average involved in it we now have solutions for all of them and like you said mark esg is ubiquitously important um so if a deal can we can turn 15 we can turn seven or five of those customers into paid subscribers for other modules it doesn't make sense to charge for deals it, it makes sense to make it free and just get more deals and and capture the whole market so you know what we're chipping away is that kind of strategy to be able to use uh, our unique business model that exposes us to thousands of organizations through deals uh, very intimately uh, for for a long period and then transform them into future revenue and then uh, if i can ask another one uh, you talked about you know the customer growth being a leading indicator for uh, subscriber growth um uh, kind of a two part question what what is that kind of conversion rate from customer to subscriber and kind of how long do they be in the customer group before they move over to the subscriber group before they kind of realize look we, we have to go to the like fully paid up version here it, it it's 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 not okay. working for us anymore uh, uh just on the, on the freemium model yeah good question it does that that answer changes depending on the product but um for most most of it the conversions very fast actually it's within 30 days uh you know most people that sign up for free within 30 days they convert to to paid um you know the conversion rate from uh, depends where you take it from people that click a button and say yes i want to sign up to convert to paid uh in e-commerce that's around 12 percent. but when you've got direct sales that's around 70 percent. because direct sales are more intimately working on an account basis so they, they're focused on accounts converting accounts whereas the net the net that we're casting with e-commerce is very 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 broad and of course, you've got some tire kickers in there and different things like that. So our conversion rates are very, very healthy. They're some of the best in SaaS. And like I said, we look at the CAC payback to measure that efficiency as well. Okay, perfect. Sam, I think we're just up on time there. Um, so I think we we'll, we we'll leave it there rather than trying to squeeze in a, an, another question. Uh, thanks very much for coming back in and giving us an update on uh, all things Ansarada. And we'll uh, keep an eye out for uh, further updates uh, throughout the, the next couple of months. All right, great. Thanks for having me, Mark.